telling oh, myself it would be worse. Don't worry about the audio file. Oh, God. This yeah, is yeah. called interview? It's three and a half hours. Don't worry yeah, about the audio file. Let's go for it. Oh. All right, fantastic. <laughs> uh, camera A. Uh, oh, camera B. All right. Well, my name is Ken Howard. My day job is as a pastor of a congregation in uh, Germantown, Maryland a congregation which I started about 20 years ago and uh, which is now becoming mature. What I'm moving into uh, is to direct a new organization called Faith X, uh, which will be trying to not only put together a book on experimental ways of, of uh, creating communities, faith communities for the future, but also will be a network that will allow us to bring people together from a lot of different backgrounds um, and uh, exchange the best practices that they're finding. So those are my two jobs at the moment. <laughs> it's one of the things that church and most faith communities don't do very well. They don't learn from failures. They kind of sweep them under the rug. Well, I said, no, we'll learn from this. And so what we did was kind of look at what people wanted and people, what people said that they wanted was they wanted a way of being church that was strong enough, they were held together in a way that was strong enough that no issues could tear them apart ever again. And so my response to them was, well, if, you, if, if we do this together, there's going to be one thing holding us together, and that's Christ's love for us, period. Everything else, secondary. And that has allowed us to be a community that could be very, very diverse, people from the very conservative side to the very liberal side that could come together and love each other. Speeding. So this is take four. Take four. All right. Take four. Camera A. Camera B. I can see your hands. And off of you, Patrick. Okay. One of the seven practices you mentioned. Uh... <laughs> well, the interesting thing when you're trying to talk about new ideas is they often don't uh, get accepted as well in your own community as they do in other communities. Um, as we began to talk about these ideas of a kind of ex a kind of an experimentally oriented, vision-driven uh, church, um, faith communities were the least responsive at first. Interestingly, startup folks could see the the connection between the two, and so uh, that started out with me going to a, 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 a summit for nonprofits in D.C. and pitching the ideas about what faith communities could steal from business startups and what business startups could, could steal from faith communities. And I didn't know that it was going to go anywhere, but the, 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 the whole Twitter verse <laughs> at that particular venue just kind of burst. Uh, and people were coming up and saying, you know, this is a really great idea, this whole idea of minimum viable belief. Uh, one person said, mine dot blown. Uh, books aren't usually thought of as products, but yes, they really are. Uh, one of the advantages of doing a Kickstarter campaign is you can begin to do more of an open source kind of way of putting together a book. This allows us to do something different. I've always been the kind of person who thinks that when we bring people together in an entrepreneurial way, that we always end up with a better product. That we always get uh, a lot closer to something that works a lot, closer to something that's true, if we have a lot of different voices at the table. It allows us to open things up where other people can have input in terms of trying the processes that we're talking about, trying the various of the seven practices we're talking about in the book. Um, try them, give us feedback, give us uh, uh, information about how it's working in their areas. So the idea is with that we can do a very open process. We can get lots of input from a lot of different people. We can actually create a network in the process of actually financing the book. We can, what I see happening is, is that the book will include a lot of, of uh, a lot of the experiences of a lot of the various people who are becoming partners in this. Uh, and as it moves along, they'll continue to develop a network of people. So I can see the, I can see the Kickstarter campaign developing uh, lots and lots of hands-on real life, real world kinds of experiences in which people are putting the principles and the practices in the book to the test out there, feeding them back in, and then that becoming a network over the long term. So FaithX would not be just a book, 
but it would be a network of people who are out there trying experimental ways of, of creating faith communities of all sorts and being able to share those best practices and the new things that they're discovering with each other. And that's a whole lot better than just having a book that might sit on a shelf somewhere. <laughs>